Welcome to Stoughton Spotlight. I'm your host, Jeffrey Pickett. On this episode, my guest is the Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, David Spanky Souza, and he's here to talk about what has certainly been an eventful month for the Board of Selectmen and the town. So let's get right into it. David, thank you for joining me. Jeffrey, thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to yourself, Michael, Dave, and CJ for being neutral, uh, what's going on through the town. It's a sad crisis, but it, things had to be done for the people, so. Well, let's, talk, let's get right into it and talk about how we kind of got here. And, you know, every, everybody knows who's watching that Michael Hartman, his contract expired July 1, and that there was a group that believed that his contract, that meant that he simply was working at will. And your side believed that no, his contract had expired. The case went to Superior Court. A, a ruling was made in a temporary, uh, or rather a, an injunction, um, a preliminary injunction, that's what I was looking for. Correct. And inter multiple interim town managers have been named and there's been some contentious board of selectmen meetings that have lasted only five or six minutes long. So. Again, let's backtrack. How did we get to this point here? Well, there's a lot. I'd like to read a couple things quick for us, and then maybe you can go off of this. I think it'd be much easier so you can understand it, and we can answer some questions. First of all, uh, we listened to the public. They said they wanted to wait for Mr. Hartman's contract to run out, which we did do that. Uh, he was notified. They came up in December. Uh, they complained and argued, let his contract run out. Mr. Hartman knew his contract was running out. We gave him a letter in December. And we also gave him a letter in April. The you know, reason was uh, he, we were trying to work with him, as Mr. Brown said at the other meeting, that we were trying to work with Mr. Hartman to see what can go on. And as time was going on, that's why we are. Uh, and with interim town managers, people saying we we're paying five and six interim town managers, we were not paying any interim town manager. Uh, Mr. Rowe was getting paid uh, from his accountant pay. Mr. Tisdale was getting his uh, engineer pay. When Ms. Bassler did it, I guess it was a conflict because she was union in management, so she could no longer be um, interim town or acting town manager. She wasn't getting extra money. Uh, Mr. Gibbons uh, from the assessor also was not getting extra money. The only person that got extra money, and still to this day is getting extra money, is the human resource director when he was acting uh, clerk for the town and also he got a 2%, I think it was a 2%, I don't know it was 2.5, I think it was a 2% increase because he was doing the clerk's job. He was doing a job that wasn't even certified or classified for or certified for or had the license for. But they gave, uh, the former town manager gave him an extra 2%. When they hired a, a full-time clerk, they never took that 2% away. So he's still making money for a job that, so, but I just want to say, we listened to the people. Uh, so everything was done through town, with, uh, through and with town council. All the selectmen meetings, executive sessions, and, uh, received emails for two selectmen to say they uh, don't know what uh, it's not true. They get their packets, and that's what I ran on to become a selectman. If any one selectman in particular or ex selectman are more entitled to documents than I am, and that's because of some people, like I said, we were here at one of your show with the president of SMAC, Mr. Uh, Stagnone. He had a letter that he, he had, and certain people had, and Yet, as the chairman of the board at the time, I didn't even see that letter. And, you, and I know you were very clear in saying, you know, because you work for Mr. Stagno and all that, I said, hey, I have no problem with that. That's why I'm here, because you are very neutral. And that's why I respect SMAC, and I love what SMAC does for this town. So these are the things that I'm just, you know, some things. How come certain ex selectmen have their ability to get stuff quicker than? Well, well let's, let's but, go back okay. to the, the current issue with the, with the process. I want to talk a little bit about okay, process. Just, okay, let me just finish this okay. quick and then I'll, I'll sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, they know they have documents before, uh, they know I, they can get documents before I, I can get them. Current, employ, uh, current employees get uh, mail, they get mail open. Uh, I get my mail open even before uh, it gets to us or not to us at all. We had, a, we had ethics violations put against us. We didn't even know that we had an ethics violation put against us. Not a, not a letter, not a letter it was sent to us it's, uh, saying we did not answer it. Once our town council got involved, the original complaint, we were able to solve the matter. We found out about two corrupt, two corrupt employees that we got an ethics violation. We weren't even notif uh, notified about it. Ethics sent us a letter saying, I don't like your answer. I'm like, what are you talking about? 
We also, uh, in all, I've had several, several uh, ethics complaints against me by former elected officials and former people in town. They have never filed opening law against me. Uh, people in the finance committee, town meeting members, wanted documents uh, that had been released as public documents. And they were not even given to them. I had to step in on that and ask why, and they don't answer me. I've been transparent from the beginning. Everyone always uh, knows where I stand. I question the school because uh, we're paying a lot of money, and I want to be sure was uh, included, and they were not. Uh, Are you talking about the high school. The new high school, yeah, the new high school building. We were not. They're going to come back for any more money. Guess what? They have asked for more money. Uh, they forgot the football field lights. Did they really forget, or did they just want to pass it and figure uh, to fool us all? Uh, Mr. Hartman got rid of uh, the ex-police chief, DPW superintendent. Uh, there were two uh, black people, I will not say what gender, uh, and one other lady that had to be carried out by ambulance due to stress from the town. And other bullies, other f f people bullied and stressed people and left on their own. Where are they? No one knows. Uh, evaluations for Mr. Hartman was done by Mr. Cohn and Mr. O'Regan. Mr. Cohn asked Mr. O'Regan to short an evaluation from 15 pages to five pages. Instead, Mr. O'Regan took it upon himself to give Mr. Hartman the evalua evaluation, look over the, uh, and decide what he should be included and not included before he shares it with uh, the board. To this day, I'm still waiting for Mr. O'Regan to send me the revised, revised evaluation. We were in a constant communication with Mr. Hartman about his perform a performance in person. We even met with him and Mr. Brown the day before the town meeting. And once again, we were treated as nobodies. It is very hard to try to serve the people when most of the administration that uh, you need to work with you, against you, not your ideas, but you personally, because, you're, uh, because we were voted in instead of their friends with their agendas. Mr. Nassis was voted interim town manager since Mr. Rowe wanted to be town accountant, but was willing to take the position until we found a suitable interim town manager. We never paid more than one town manager. We actually saved money for the month. Uh, there is no secret, as others would uh, want you to believe. He was given $170,000, no insurance, no vacation, no car, no expense account, no perks. Mr. Hartman was going to make right now $177,000 $177, with all benefits. Two interim managers ago were hired with no TV, no quorum, in a small uh, secluded room. The clerk could not find minutes, but all of a sudden the secretary found minutes. There was a quorum. There was a quorum, and you, I knew you were there, so we'll mm -hmm. get back to that. Uh, uh, where they uh, f forgot it, it would appear, so in my opinion. Mr. Stagnone ran a secret meeting yesterday at the town spa, and alleg allegedly it was a secret meeting at the town spa, and allegedly there was one in his house a couple days prior. What is his interest in this? His time's running out on the state theater. Does he want more money for the state theater? We've already given him $500,000 of the taxpayer's money. Does he want another two or three million dollars of taxpayers? They don't like me because I question things. I question the school. I question the library. Forgive me if I want to uh, be sure our tax dollars are being spent correctly and wisely. I am not a yes person. As you see the board right now, we have new selectmen who have fallen right into the yes groove. He has no opinion of his own. He's a yes man. The people that the recall have chosen to take over the, uh, the three recall selectmen are all good people. I have nothing against them. One uh, ran against me during the previous election. His campaign was for public safety. He was one of the first people to go against public safety at the town meeting, trying to vote down the extra policemen. The other two uh, will be yes men, Mr. O'Regan, or, uh, or I should say, rephrase that, or yes woman, either one. And Mr. O'Regan and Mr. Hill will have their three yes people. Mr. O'Regan and the elite few are responsible for the district overlay zoning schmood, as they call it. He doesn't like the name, he named it. We can't get our business properly zoned because he messed the entire things up throughout the town. It will take time and a few years to fix. I don't want to be like Brockton. They have a great schools, a lot of new, most of them are new, but their budget is not well-rounded to benefit everything. Police, fire, DPW. They have one of the highest foreclosure rates in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. They have laid off teachers, fire, police, DPW. At, our, at a minimum. Deb Sauvignet is accusing me of uh, what she did at the school com committee member, the former school committee member, sometimes refused citizens from speaking. When they uh, have public comments, they always let people speak. I always let people speak 
when there's public comment. The people that, I'm sorry, Jeff, want to come up and bash the board and threaten others, residents, threaten board members, will not be heard. If you have a problem and want to come without naming, calling, or bashing, the board will listen to you. But if you want to come up here and name bashing, we will not listen to you. Uh, the group, uh, the recalled, or should I uh, say behind the recall, not getting their hands dirty, don't like me because I ask questions. Tell the truth. Can't be bought, and I never will sell my soul. You may not like me. You may not agree with me and all, all the time. But I have been the most honest and will continue to be honest. If the town wants to recall and the public votes me out, so be it, as, uh, as they wish of the voters. This is why we have democracy. I would think the town would be proud of, of this board and what we've accomplished in such a short time. I would like to take this, uh, thank the town people about here to ask questions, inquire, not just yes people. I have worked hard for the town and I will continue. Whatever do, do not, I will never do anything to harm this town. Uh, I represent diversity community. You know I do not always uh, make people happy, but I will make people happy. Uh, Please call me and always take your call and call, call you back. 71-760-4650. But let's just thank you for getting oh, me on this. It certainly over. gives a, a lot to, to talk about. So Does. Uh, going back to the, uh, the end of June here. Yep. Um, there's a meeting to, I believe it's June 29th, a uh, short meeting to appoint an interim town manager because Michael Hartman's contract is set to expire on July 1. And... At that, when in this process did it become clear, because you mentioned that you had attempted to reach out and work with Michael Hartman, when in this process did it become clear that you and Michael were not going to be able to come to an agreement and be able to make things work? Like when did you know that at, as of July 1, he's not our town manager? Uh, right after town meeting, that was my opinion. Right at the town meeting. So we're talking roughly end of May. End of May. Ah, uh, maybe even beginning of May. So I guess in that, in that sense, why wasn't the process to find an interim started before that? Now, this, the two circumstances are certainly different. Uh, when, when Frank Crimmins resigned as town manager in 2012, he resigned. Yes. He gave at least, I want to say, two, maybe three months' notice. He gave a, a lot of notice. There was, there was an interview in the Fitzpatrick room where they had two people interviewed. Mr. Feaster was chosen as interim town manager. And so that process, it, it's not apples to apples, but if you knew that as of July 1, Michael Hartman wasn't going to be town manager in your eyes, why wasn't the process started earlier to find a replacement rather than you have to go to... Mr. Rowe as an interim, uh, kind of like to, to hold the seat, and you end up having multiple people having to fill in when he's on vacation, then there's the question of can the town accountant even serve as town manager due to state law? It just seemed like the process was, uh, it was a little more chaotic than maybe it needed to be. Great questions, Jeff. Um, first of all, the people, and they're going to come up here now and they're going to tell you I'm lying about all this and I know other people are going to come up here and say this is all lies. I have nothing to lie. I'm not going to lie. You've gotten to know me over the past 29 years, I guess even longer since you've gone past, maybe 17, 18 years, maybe even longer now. Um, I said how it is. Uh, we asked, the people told us, like I read out, wait till his contract expired. His contract expired July 1st. We are going to now um, continue with the search. Uh, we will start that. But as you see now, we have a recall coming up. Uh, so, of course, again, once it is put on hold, this recall is going to cost the town at least $30,000. Uh, it's not the three of us spending the town. It's the other two selectmen that are causing the town to spend the money. We're not spending the money foolishly. Uh, it's, you know, this is uh, wrong. There was a recall years ago, Jeff, and you probably just started with the patch back then maybe if not even sure but no that's prior to prior that to even, even yep. prior to you so but you mm -hmm. must remember that recall mm -hmm. that recall destroyed people it destroyed families it destroyed children it destroyed this town this is what they want to do again this group uh, they want to control everything they control the school committee right now 
they control the FinCon. They control the Redevelopment Authority. They control town meeting. And now they want to control the, the Board of Selectmen. Listen, they got great ideas, and I've said that in the past, but they don't give up. Uh, like I said, there's two generals, one that lives off of West Street and one that lives off of Sumner Street. They are the two five-star generals. Other ones want to be generals, lieutenants, captains, sergeants. They have foot shoulders. They have foot soldiers because they're, um, they're being told uh, what to do. Uh, well, you, all right, so you're, you're certainly, as you've mentioned before, you've, you've made special people, shadow government, you're yeah, making references to that. But they, if you're going to, I think a lot of people out there who maybe aren't politically motivated one way or the other, yep. just want to see a board that can work together. If there's language like that on one side and then on their side they're calling you and Mr. Cohn and Mr. Brown stupid and they're questioning your intelligence and disrespectful that way, where can you guys come together? Because recall or not, that's not happening till the fall. When can you guys come together and work and be productive over the next well, few Well, we months? are. We are still working. We start, we're starting to get things done. But uh, as you see, certain people, as that minute, uh, meeting that was very quick, as you said, I was trying to speak, and these people kept screaming, screaming, screaming. And I kept saying, please, please, please. But when they say about them screaming, it's okay if they scream. Like I said, the rules don't apply to certain people, and I don't understand, so it only applies if it, if it doesn't go their way, it's against us. All right, but how can you be the person as chairman that can potentially well, uh, bridge a gap? Because I could see as one of the central themes of a recall election will be that the board's dysfunctional. How can you bridge the board back together and make, make the board functional? Well, as you saw the meeting last uh, Tuesday night, it was very professional, very thing. Uh, like I said, we can agree to disagree, and I am okay with that. But it's never, our ideas are never good. Their ideas are better. Uh, we can try to talk, but certain people don't want our ideas. And this is what the problem is. Uh, it's only their ideas. A perfect example, uh, there's a redevelopment authority. The, in my opinion, uh, the redevelopment authority chairman, uh, other half, takes minutes for the redevelopment authority. They pay this person a couple hundred dollars to take minutes for the redevelopment authority. How does, how does the chairman of the redevelopment authority sign the warrant or paperwork to get his wife paid? Is that a conflict of interest? I don't know. I think it's, it sounds like a conflict of interest. I don't know all the answers, Jeff. Uh, if you see on Facebook, why do they go to, why do they constantly go to me? Why do they constantly go to me? Because I know which department is called. I call department heads. I tell them, call this department head. I go to this department head. Uh, you know, you see a, a veteran sign taken down. I saw one the other day. I called the DBW on the way home from work. I'm like, hey, this is down. The pole's been damaged. Someone hit it. Uh, can you let Mike Bizarro know uh, to reorder a sign and get a fixed ASP? Because these people gave us the freedom to live in this great country. Uh, this is what I do. Uh, I became a selectman. To, I saw how Mr. Harmon only talked to a selected few people. Uh, no one could go in and see him. Uh, there are certain people, secretaries and other not department heads, or I should say, there's other people telling department heads what to do. How do we have people that aren't bosses telling department heads what to do? People do not see this. And like I said, they're going to come up here and they tell you I'm lying. Ask the employees right now. Uh, Mr. Nastas uh, was a great choice. Uh, Mr. O'Regan said I knew about Mr. Nastas. I was actually going to pick a couple of the people in town that live in town. There's actually three people that live in town. Department as you know who they are, and I was going to pick two of those three people. Uh, Mr. Cohen said he went out, he called me up, he said, he went out, I want to talk first because I have a person. Like, who is it? He goes, you'll see at the meeting. I said, okay. I did not push, I did not question, like, fine, you know. I said, should we have your opinion? If you want your opinion first, you're the vice chairman, fine, I'll, I'll give you the kit. And that's when he said Mr. Nastas. Sure, but it, to, that seemed like, and I, certainly anybody who's been following town politics knows, uh, Mr. Anastos very well, knows what he brings to the table, but why wasn't there, uh, I guess, again, process-wise, have an interview publicly or, or advertise the position and, and have people be able to apply for it and, and go about it that way? Because you talked about you know, openness and transparency and just having that process kind of be, like anybody can sit and see, all right, these are the people who applied for the position and you know, this, this Gentleman was clearly the best one of the bunch. Correct, and I, you know, 
You're right there, but like it says, Mr. Feasta was brought in on a 2-2-1 two, two, vote. 2-1, to one, and I believe Ms. Walsh voted no. Okay, on so 2-1, to one, yes. and one was not even there. One of the selectmen weren't even there. Actually, the so, current interim town manager. The current interim was not there, so uh, it takes three to hire and four to fire. So I know there was a quorum there, and I'm not going to argue with this quorum, but how do you hire somebody on two votes? Because the charter clearly says three to hire, four to fire. So they hired an interim town manager on two. I didn't break the town charter. I, the charter, the judge, the superior court judge, he kept saying it. The contract supersedes the charter. If this recall goes through, and if it does, like I said, it's the wish of the people. But I'm telling you, and I have nothing to lie, I will walk away with my head held high with pride. I never got any family members' jobs. I never got friends' jobs. I never took a dime from this town. I didn't run for a resume. I didn't run for a political career. I ran to help everybody in this town. Everybody. My question is, if this recall goes through, they will bring the current town manager back well over two hundred thousand dollars, guaranteed. And they're going to tell you, they're going to come on the show and tell you that I'm lying and this is not true. They're going to bring this man back because, as you know, he had a history, and it's public knowledge. You can go on the website and wear him and saw what this man does. Everywhere he goes, it's the same things over and over again. Um, I didn't want that for this town. This town had, like I said, I recall years ago, it destroyed people. Uh, our town manager should be seen out there, like us, myself, Mr. Cohn. Uh, Mr. Brown, people see us. I, as you know, Jeff, I'm everywhere around town. People talk to me. Uh, stop at shop. I even go to Market Basket, uh, Shaw's and Canton, wherever I am, you know, Daddy's Dairy, yeah, Chengdu, Bink, wherever I go, I'm always talking to the people, you know. So well, I'm very straightforward in this. This is what they don't want. Uh, people forgot what politics are about. Politics, and this goes not just here in the town of Stoughton, it's uh, councilmen, aldermen. Uh, state senator, the state reps, whatever you want to call it, all the way up to the President of the United States. Once you forget what you are there for and listen to the people and represent the people, you should no longer be uh, in surf. Uh, we didn't do the uh, thing because, like I said, he's interim. We are going to do this. But Mr. Fiesta, like I said, it was not a 3 2 vote. I mean, it wasn't a 3 vote, it was a 2. Is that against the charter? They're saying I'm constantly against the charter. I'm not doing nothing against the charter. Uh, it's just they don't like the way you act because I ask questions. It's just, what was I say? As you see the meetings, Jeff, you go there and tape and everything else. You hear about uh, Mr. Cohen, new restaurant comes up, and uh, I look over at Mr. Cohen, and he's, Mr. Cohen's the best, best friend I've met. Met him about eight years ago now at the Y, became best friends. I tell him he's my adopted Jewish father. He <laughs> says, if I had a Jewish son like you, I'd shoot you. Uh, Bob is a great friend. Peter Brown was a friend even prior to uh, this too. I went, went to school with his wife, Donna. A couple years, I'm a couple of years younger than his wife, so it's funny how to see this. And then uh, there was a member of the board of selectmen. If you hear, he took me out to dinner, and he said he melted his credit card. And he would never feed me again because his credit card has melted. I went out to dinner with this person, and this person talked about the overlay district, the schmood, parking in the center, and all that. And I says, you know, because when there's more than three people, I stay away from this. You know, we all go deep, but we don't talk business because I know people are looking to ethics violations. We are friends. That's like me, myself going out with you or CJ, all of us friends. We don't have to talk business. We can talk about sports and baseball, and that's what we do. But these people think we don't. One-on-one, -on -one, yes, we do all talk business. Mr. The person I went out to dinner with talked about business. And I says, we already know this. I says, what is the real truth you want me here? And he says, what are you talking about? I says, this is not why you want me here. I know why you want me here. And this person said, really, if you know what I want you here for, tell me what it is. You want to know what it is? He says, yes. I told him straight out, you want to know how I drink the magical Kool-Aid, the poison. They want to put their nails into me, as they say, the magical Kool-Aid. This person hesitated for a minute and looked at me and said, yes, that is true. How do I get you to drink the Kool-Aid? I said, why do you want me to drink the Kool-Aid? He says, because the people in this town, they love you, they respect you, and they know you won't steer them wrong. He says, you will be a great asset to our team. What team? What, the, what is this team? What, uh, this team is the town of Stoughton, not just a certain individual group. This is what I'm talking about. Uh, I says, I cannot be part of that team. And he says, I want to. He says, me, I want your answer now. I said, I'll give you my answer. That's not the million dollar question. That's not the billion dollar question. That's not even the trillion dollar question. I will not sell my soul to the devil, if you want to call it. I represent the town with my heart and my soul. I will not, you know, 
I'm not polished about it. I'm not politically correct about it. Uh, I started wearing shirts and ties because my supporter says, hey, dress up a little bit, you know, fine. I'll put a shirt and tie on. But I'm still the same person that I was four years ago when I walked into the sport. And I will be the same person when I walk away in three or four years, or if I get recalled, I'll walk away. I will never change who I am. Uh, I talked to a person the other day who's been an employee for uh, 24 years in this town. This person says, I met you 24 years ago. You were the same person then that you are now. He says, I want to thank you for not changing. So I appreciate it. This is what it's about. Uh, if this uh, recall goes through and the time edge will come back, police, fire, DPW will suffer. We need a well-rounded community. Hey, I went to Stone High as yourself, Jeff, went to Stone High. Uh, this new building, it is, it is state-of-the-art. It's gorgeous. We're going to have the best uh, economical training. Uh, Ms. Miller put something up. It's the best uh, throughout the Commonwealth. The You're talking about the, ed the special ed plan, the, edu the, ed plan, the education, education plan. plan that the education plan. Yes. It's out of this world. Uh, the school building committee out of Boston said it's unbelievable. We, like I said, we're going to have a state-of-the-art school. We're going to have a state-of-the-art library. The town is moving forward. It's a great thing. But like I said, Brockton has this stuff. If we don't share the budget with our police and fire and DPW, are well-rounded to protect our seniors, to protect people like ourselves, to protect most, I think, to me, as for you cannot answer that, but our most precious uh, thing in this world is our children. We want the best for our children. The children are our future of this town. And this is, um, and this is what it's all about. Uh, these taxes are going to go sky high. How do I protect my seniors who either choose from paying the rent, uh, getting food, getting the med medication? we got a great town. We pick up trash. We uh, plow our streets. We um, pave our roads. If we cut, 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 our response time at police and fire is unbelievable. Uh, I was just received an email today. The safer grant, we talked about a safer grant to hire eight more firefighters, which the, the fire department is down a lot. Uh, so the safer grant is now, it, it works out, they pay so much, and in four years we pay the full amount for the safer grant. If these people get in, they're going to tell you they're public safety, they're, they're pro public safety, they're going to kill this safer grant. So they're taking the safety away from the town of Stoughton. So I don't know, just, I know I'm going everywhere with this, and I'm sorry, but I think any elected official, any town employee, uh, like I says, I had somebody the other day come up to me and tell me straight out, you're going to lose your title as selectman. Ha, ha, ha. I kind of looked at the person and I says, lose my title? Ha, ha. I says, what do you mean you're going to lose my title? You're going to get recalled and you're no longer going to be a selectman. I said, well, first of all, like I says, and I'm so, they say I'm not, so, these people are so smart as they say, the title was never mine to begin with. I've told people that in the beginning. The title belongs to the businesses. It belongs to the employees, it belongs to the residents, and it belongs to anybody who has an interest in the town of Stoughton. This is who the title belongs to. I went to a business the other day. Uh, a resident was doing some work at this business. The business had a problem with an issue. Uh, this person says, let me call one of the selectmen, see if he can come out. I, as you know, I work nights. I was getting my three hours sleep for the day, and I got up, and I picked up the phone and returned the phone call. Uh, the following day, I had an appointment in the city with my son at the doctor's. I said I could not be back into the town of Stoughton until sometime afternoon time. Called up around 11.15, uh, said, hey, I'm on my way back. I met with this business. Uh, the business brings in $25 million in sales a year. How can we help them? The town is fighting these people. So these people just came in several years ago. A $25 million company, over 100 employees, and want to hire more. They want to put a, uh, an addition on. But yet the town is fighting them. Why are we fighting these businesses that make $25 million in sale? $25 million. But no, Chinese restaurant, gas station, pizza joints. Now, auto parts. We'll get more auto parts. Let's bring businesses. Uh, let's bring in some small town restaurants. Let's do it, but we got to work together as a team. And it's, like I said, these people fight, and, f and there's no need to fight. Let's do what's right. But we, the people need to be heard. And I have a problem that, only a select few people could go uh, talk to the town manager. He never asked me what his ideas were. He says, hey, this is my idea. What do you think about it? I could disagree or not disagree with him. You know, this is what I want to do. He never talked to us. He never talked to us. He talked to certain other members of the board. 
Why, why didn't you talk to us? What, what was your idea? Like, Jeff, what do you want to do here? How, you know, like, say you set these cameras. How do you want to set these cameras? I don't know how to do it. Explain why. And you say, this way it goes this way. And I'd say, hey, why can't it go this way? And they explained. He would never explain that to us. So these are the things that the people don't know. They're not hearing the truth. You're hearing the truth. Like I said, these employees, these, where did these employees go? One left by ambulance. Whatever happened to her? Whatever happened to her, Jeff? Two black employees. What happened to them? One person was bullied, uh, went out on stress. What happened to this person? But how funny, there's a department head that picked on a rel religious group years ago. Picked on, a excuse me, picked on a religious group years ago, was put on the front page of the paper and everything else. Uh, nothing, nothing happened to that. Now this person, they, uh, they bring in a, an investigation team to find out what was going on. Of course, you, you hire your own investigation team instead of bringing an outside person that doesn't know anything about what's going on in town. Of course they find nothing because they do it on purpose. There's a person that ran for a selectman years ago, Jeff. Uh, as they say, a big mouth like me. This person had a very big mouth and they didn't want this person. Uh, this person did not win. All of a sudden they made this person drink the Kool-Aid, as they call it, Jeff. Uh, they've changed the person to the other side. And how funny, this person now uh, had a a deck, allegedly, and in my opinion, had a deck built where they were living on wetlands and conservation area, but no one else could get this done. Glen Echo, a million dollars, over a million dollars. And to my opinion, and I just, I'm a, in my opinion, because I'm not, I don't think there's a need for Glen Echo yet, because they need to spend another 300 to a half a million dollars to get it right. And then on that previous thing, I was talking about this person, how they built the deck and all that. How funny that this person comes up and criticizes us, criticizes this board, yet uh, this person's other half uh, allegedly was caught for fraud. Uh, I don't know if it was Medicaid fraud, medical malpractice. I don't know if it was 300, over half a million dollars or even more money. I know it was in the paper, you can look it up. This is fact, it was money taken from a Medicaid or insurance company, I don't know, but. These people have the audacity, they steal money from the government or the people, and they have the audacity to come up here and tell you, oh, I'm better than you? You stole. You stole. Well, I, I, so I understand where you're getting at in the sense of, of saying people, you know, allegedly are taking, are playing the game of politics very well and that there's, you know, a group of people uh, that yes. have power and, and influence in the town. I understand what you're saying there. Um, but... How do you bridge, as I said earlier, how do you, because if you're, what, how do you bridge the gap? How do you get people to work together so that there isn't this divide between these two groups? That's, that's the trillion dollar question. And, and no. Especially, and I'll just say though, it is kind of hard to come to the table if you're, if you're labeling them as special people or of the shadow government, how do you get them to the table? Uh, we've been starting to talk, uh, as you saw at the last meeting. We, I've asked a couple questions, and one of the selectmen already started to dig again. Uh, they're setting their ways, and we're setting our ways. Uh, but I'm going to keep trying, Jeff. I will keep trying. Uh, all of us were elected by the people of this town uh, to do a job. Um, they might like their ideas better. They might like our, our ideas better. But the people don't know the truth. And there's certain things, like I said, they're still under litigation that I cannot talk about. But like I said, it's, it's sad. These people need to know what is going on. Uh, call me. I'll meet you for coffee. As you know, Jeff, I go, people's, I, it's just, I'm trying to work with these people, but it's, they're so set in their way, they need to get rid of me. I am the poison. Why am I the poison? Like I said, as you know, Jeff, I was a big supporter of the school. I was the first one that went out with Vaughn and Oki, and he says, I want you to talk because the people listen to you in town. The people you believe you. made in. a video. Yep, I did. Sorry, and I, and, yep. and, uh, I was told, let's do it right here in Stone Center. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I'm not doing it in Stone Center. I'm doing it where I, I graduated from. Let's go to the high school right here right now. We went mm -hmm. to the high school. Mm -hmm. And then other people took it from the high school. I was the first one mm -hmm. to go to the high school. I love this town. I think the school is a great idea. It's going to have AC. My daughter's going to be the first class graduating from uh, the new high school, mm -hmm. 2020. Mm -hmm. It's an honor. It's an honor for me. It's, an honor. it's a town. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, this is awesome. It really is. But how do we... It's like I said, they're not working with us. Why are they working against us? Like I said, their ideas are great. Years ago, there was uh, an issue with uh, a former selectman who changed the rules 
and ruined his uh, family members to sell property for houses. Another good one, I'm going to tell you, if people don't know, former member of the Board of Selectmen, allegedly in my opinion, and also lives, uh, and actually also is a member here of, uh, on the staff, and I shouldn't say the staff, let me rephrase that, on the board of SMAC. When this person was a selectman, there was a house, in my opinion, there was a house across the street from this person, where this person lived. And allegedly it was an abandoned house uh, in a property. His first, second, or even third meeting, there was no more than three meetings, he found out the town owned the property. He made a motion to take the house down, to remove the foundation, at the expense of the taxpayers because he didn't want to look at an abandoned house. Now, that, now t is that abuse of power? Me personally? I think it is. But if I'm saying this now, they're going to say I'm wrong because these, these facts are not true. Look at these facts. Look where the, the property was and where the property is now. There's no sight of a house. There's no sight of a foundation. That, you know, that area would be great for a Habitat for Humanity house. We did one on Starter Star 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 Street there. Yep. It was great. We should get a couple more. Uh, because well, you promised it. I'm page, gonna so. uh, well. It depends how long I do want to promise one. I want to give another one, but if I'm not in office anymore, I can't promise one. But these people who need help, to, this is what it's about. It's a, it's a great thing, but how come these people can do this, and no one else can? I don't. Like it says, there's um, and maybe I may not know, excuse me. The uh, is it the Drake on Morton and Washington Street, that new apartment building? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's a uh, little office space. Uh, I shouldn't say office space or. Sales, sales house or uh, the, the uh, state theater has a little office there now or showroom, whatever you want to call it. I heard, and it's my opinion, I don't know, I can't, you know, prove this. It's they're there for free, so they're there for free. So why couldn't you put somebody else there for free? Uh, another, uh, not proper as anything. But how funny is it that did this person use his influence as a former member of the board of selectmen, or did he have the former town manager? bully these people to allow this to go through and to get his building? I don't know. These are questions I want to ask. Chang, the Changdu building is another one I saw on Facebook. You're, just to clarify, former Changdu building? So, yeah, sorry, yes. former Changdu building in Stoughton Center. Uh, the developer called me a couple weeks back and wanted, and some, somebody put on Facebook saying, oh, now the selectmen are making deals, get back to a deals behind, uh, not in public office, and behind the residents. Uh, the building's not even owned by this person yet, the, the supposed builder. It is still owned by Malcolm and Parsons. This supposed builder called me up and says, hey, you know, we're looking to do this, and I saw the plans, and like I said, yeah, the plans look nice. I need four spots in Stoughton Center to make this thing happen. He wants to put, like, a restaurant in there and everything else, and like I said, it would be great, another restaurant downtown. And like, right now there is plenty of parking because there's not a lot of stores down there. But he wanted me to give him four spaces, four spaces to benefit his pocketbook, his dreams, and everything else. So yeah, he will have a great restaurant. We'll have some storefronts up there. Great, but now you have a new restaurant. People want to go park. Four spots right there at the Open Chico Hardware are designated to him. So what if somebody wanted to go there, park there instead? They'd have to go down there, uh, Randolph Savings Bank, or past the town hall, or past the uh, to park at the uh, train station or the uh, post office. Yeah, I know this team, we want to move this thing forward, but how can I give somebody four property? And this is my opinion, I don't want to know no one's else. I can't give you four spaces that you're going to benefit from, and the town loses. I didn't see the advantage of this, and I says, but I will not pass this. Does the town win, though, with a hole in the ground for almost no, but 10 I, years? No, and this is, this is another thing. My opinion again, I don't think that uh, area is safe at all. I've asked Mr. Hartman to contact the uh, State Building Authority. Uh, I, my, my, uh, my opinion, I guess there was a statement done at the town clerk that the town building inspector is friends with this builder. He puts some type of things, so there's no conflict of interest or anything else, he just exports whatever I, the, word, the direct wording for this is, to allow so, what, so now he's saying, oh, you know, let's wait because it's a friend of mine. This is what it seems to me. It seems to me, and the people don't know that. So it's okay for your friend, but we have the old Merrimack building. That is a disgrace. We have building, uh, abandoned property on 27, across from the Merrimack building. They want sewer up there. Sewer would be great. Some people can't afford it, some people can't afford it. Sewer would be great. 
but they want to shove things down people's throats and raise taxes. And they're going to do this. And they're going to shove it down the throat so certain friends and members are going to get big money when they sell this property. We have two abandoned properties right up on Turnpike Street. Actually, right around the corner here from the uh, smack, coming up 139, uh, across the Dunkin' Donuts. There's two abandoned buildings. Why can't we take those down? Why do people have to look at it? Why can't we take the building down? The former Chengdu. Why, is the, why can't the town? The town can force these people to take it down. It's a disgrace. But certain people will not allow that to happen. Well, let's, let's go into, um, so, cause a lot of this kind of reflects more or less on a uh, you know, town manager's job performance. And one of the big content, contentions is that the town manager was not reviewed. Now, you said when you read your statement at the top of the show, you said that there was a process Excuse of me. trying to have the town manager reviewed. But I guess in more or less to lack of better term to you know, cover your own rear end, okay. why not just do it? Uh, you're the chairman of the board, have been for the last two years. Yes. Why not just do a review of the town manager and, and execute a review, whether he likes the review or not, that there's a review, a written review on record, because through various talk shows you've been, you've been on Roy's show, you've been on Dave's show, you've been on shows with me before. We, we know what your opinion of the town and the way that the administration of the town is running, but just to have that all in writing so that when there is a, a time when his contract expires, that the, he can't make the contention that, look, I was never reviewed because technically the last, I think he was reviewed I think, uh, I'll tell you exactly I, think it was. I think John Anzavino was still on the board when he was reviewed. It was in 2024, 2013? No, sir. No, sir. no, sir. That is not true. Okay. My first year who I got on the oh, board. Yes, you were still on. Yes. My first year on the board, yes. the chairman of that time reviewed him. It was a scale between one through five. I, I apologize. You're, you're correct. I remember this. Oh, yes. Okay. So uh, prior to the, the election, this person called me and says, you're going to win this and that. And I said, well, if this happens, my vote will be for you to automatically be chairman. Uh, I know this person as a kid. Didn't know him that good, but knew who he was and respectful people and everything else. He became the chairman. He says, hey, went out and talked one night. He had a beer. I had my water. And he'll deny this again. This is what the best part I love. And he says, hey, thank you. for you know, Because for the past year, I've been left in the dock. I don't know nothing. He doesn't, the town manager doesn't talk to me, this and that. Maybe we can get this town manager to talk and we can work together to make this guy, because I personally don't like this guy. He's not the right fit for this town. Okay, great. So now I get somebody I think's on my team. Four months later, things happen, relationships happen, everything else. Now oh, this town manager is the best thing since sliced bread. I ask why, what about this, what about this? Don't worry, trust me. Don't worry, trust me. Don't worry, trust me. Okay, trust me. The next election, this person, is voted out by a write-in campaign. Voted out by a write-in campaign. Mm -hmm. The people of this town spoke. Uh, I haven't had help up there. Am I the best chairman? No, I do the best. Right, no, I, I, I no, understand so, that, but, but, but still, no, why so, not no, no, okay, so the, now, the review? Why not? I gave him now, review? We did give him the review. So now. That, but that was. No, that but was you're right. No, I understand, but let me finish. The re, yes, but the, the review I gave was one through five. I put all ones because I don't right. like his review. Sure. And I guarantee as you see the way the board's voting now, and I cannot speak for the other members, I guarantee the, the, uh, the review would have been the same way, three to two. Three in, against and two in favor. And once again, the two that are there now would say, unacceptable, this and that, you, uh, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. So no matter how we did it, if I did it, Jeff, I would have been wrong. If I didn't, I mean, I didn't do it, I was wrong. Right. If I, I did it, I was wrong. I guess my point is, is that no matter what, whether it was going to be three to two, as you're saying it, yeah, it, it probably would have been. At least, at least you cover your, your tracks you're and right, Jeff, make sure that, as, hey, I did what I was supposed to do. I, yeah, you're, you're right there, but you know what? I'm damned if I do and damned if I don't. I can tell everybody right now, everybody, you know, I can say everybody right now, hey, everybody's getting a tax break, we're all getting $10,000 back. Okay, that'd be a great thing, you know. And it's like I said, this is just an example. I'm, everybody's getting ten thousand dollars back here in the town of Stoke. So just to clarify, nobody can, people shouldn't get excited. No, about people, that. no, no, <laughs> people should not get excited. But just say this is hypothetically, you know, yeah. you, everybody's getting ten thousand dollars back. You know what? These people would find something wrong with this. They would find something wrong with this. No matter what we do, they don't like any of our things we do. So 
If I did the review, I didn't do the review, no matter what, they don't like it. This is all about power. They want the power. And this is what I still have not figured out. Why do they want the power? Some of their ideas are great. Like I've talked to uh, Glenn Echo. It's going to cost another 300 to 500 million, uh, 500 and a half million dollars again, or more money to figure out how the land goes. Instead of telling, oh, we're going to build, as you heard, Jeff, we're going to put parks up there. We're going to put picnic areas up there, bocce areas, um, horseshoe pits, uh, all kinds of great things. All of a sudden, they come up with this great plan. We're going to put six parking spots. Six parking spots. That's a lie. Tell the people, we're putting this up there because we don't want any more 40 Bs. We're not at 40 Bs. We want to keep a green space open. We want people to just go up there and hike or ride a mini bike or a motor, you know, a dirt bike and keep peace up there. Keep it clean. Why not say that? They built supposedly a dog park. Where's this dog park, Jeff? Where's the money for this dog park? They got this Cape and Reynolds house. No disrespect, they have painted windows on a building that, listen, I understand you're going to preserve, but the building's falling apart. I hate to say it. Take some pictures, say some stuff, put it in the historical society, take the building down. This is the best one. Certain people on Facebook, as you watch, they bash in. Who is going to okay the train station? Who's going to buy the train station? That's the biggest concern, buy the train station. As you, Jeff, you've been to my house, you see I love granite. I have granite all over my house. I love granite. I love stainless steel. I would love to make that building my house. I'd love to make that train station a house. That, that building is gorgeous. I do love that building. And is it part of Stoughton? Yes, it is part of Stoughton. Uh, former town manager says he had a company come in, a person want to come in who wanted to build something uh, from out of the state. We're still waiting for this person. Uh, one of the members of the board selectmen, I think, might know who it is, but we don't know who it is. But we took, we took a, a tour of the, uh, the uh, train station. I've had pictures I could show you afterwards. There is literally this much feces, at least a foot or so, feces of pigeons, raccoons, bats, whatever it is. That's going to be over a couple hundred thousand just to get rid of the feces because it's hazardous. You've got to walk in there with suits and everything. You can walk in without, if you don't disturb it, it's not going to, once you spread the feces around the dust and goes into your system, it's going to kill you. The building had a fire years ago. I don't know when the building had a fire. It was charred. There was other beams bolted it or nailed to the, the, the charred, the charred roof. The building is sinking, two ends, sinking. I don't remember which ends. We had this company come in, uh, they were uh, appraisers for old builds and all that, and they know the building is sinking. There's one member from the Redevelopment Authority that the, they gave us a vote of no confidence. The Redevelopment Authority, twice they couldn't get it sold. They screwed up twice, the Redevelopment Authority. But it's okay if the Redevelopment Authority screws up because they're part of that group. We try to take it over. Yeah, we do want to buy it. But why should I spend $170,000 on a building? Member of the Board of uh, Redevelopment Authority said Mr. Cohn was an idiot because he said $2 million. They said they could patch it up for $350,000. $350,000. How are you going to raise a building that is sinking on a dirt floor? First of all, you have to jack that thing up, support that ground with probably six, seven feet of cement in, on columns to keep that building up. Once that building is jacked up, all that mortar is going to crack. All the mortar on those blocks are going to crack. You're going to have to repoint that whole entire building, uh, front, I mean, inside and out. What is that going to cost? $350,000? No, no. You're looking well, well. Five million plus. That's a fact. Take that to the bank, and I'm not going to tell you, I'm not blowing smoke up as the, the, the sun don't shine. That's a huge, huge amount of money with the school coming, the library coming. Uh, what are we going to, then once the building's done, yeah, would it be a, a, a gateway to Stoughton? Absolutely. But where are we going to put in that building? It's not feasible to put something in there. I went down to Taunton uh, several months ago to talk about South Coastal Rail. Uh, a member from the Redevelopment Authority was there. We went up there and uh, the Senator from Taunton, Pacheco and everything else, and up the mayors and everybody else was talking. Taunton is the gateway to South Coastal Rail. Taunton this. Taunton will be the gateway to Fall River, New Bedford and all this. And I was listening. He goes, we need to make this go through because once it goes through, Raynham will thrive because Taunton is the gateway. I went there and I said, listen, I stood up and said, you no know, one knows who I am, but I says, I'm David Souza. I'm the chairman of the board of selectmen in the town of Stoughton. You guys are all talking, Taunton is the gateway, the gateway, the gateway. Well, no disrespect to you, Mr. Senator, no, Senator Pacheco, but well, 17 to 20 miles north of here, it's called the town of Stoughton, where I'm from. I says, we're the gateway, because the tracks stop there. 
track stop there. I says, we are the gateway. They want to put electric train system. I have no problem with electric train system. I've asked the MBT and everything else. And I says, depress the system. Now, I'm not going to ground like Hingham did because it's a lot of money. Depress the system. Put the electric on the ground. I don't care how you do it. Put it, you know, don't, I mean, on the ground. Just depress the system like in Sharon. You drive over Route 27 there, the train's not in your way. Depress the system. Then you can build the train tracks, no problems. No problems at all. Uh, I asked Mr. Pacheco, let's go. So what, what kind of, you want to go through Taunton, what kind of deal are you getting out of this? Because you're pushing this, you must have made some deal for yourself to get some money out of this. Is there corruption in this? And in politics, I've seen corruption. So if, like I said, if this goes through, um, but, uh, it goes through when I get out, I, but I will not be corrupt. There is corruption. I don't think Mr. Hammond was the right fit for this town. I have a problem how they let him not live here. You should be seen. He wouldn't go to any events. Nothing. He said in the department head meetings, and they, like, once again, they can say I'm lying. It's, but people like to talk, as you know, Jeff, people talk behind screens, and there's people, there was that secret meeting last night at the spa that I showed you pictures prior to coming here. People sent me pictures of who was there and who wasn't there. Uh, how funny is this things happen? But he told people in the department head meeting, I don't give a damn about the town of Stoughton. I have three more years. I'm going to collect big money. Together, they're going to give me a big raise. I'm going to raise my pension up higher. That's what I heard in my opinion. And in my opinion, I heard that. I don't know if it's true, but in my opinion, and allegedly, I'm going to get three big more years, and I'm going to retire with a great pension. I don't care about Stoughton. I don't care if they ruin themselves. I don't care if they go into bankruptcy. I don't live here. Is this the type of people we want running our office, our, our town? Well, we have about four or five minutes left. So I have a couple questions I'd like to ask. One, uh, in the last week or so, what's your first initial um, initial assessment of Mr. Anastos as interim town manager. What's he's brought to the, what has he brought to the table and you know what what do you hope that you can do together? Rebuild the trust in the community and our employees and our businesses. Uh, Mr. Anastos has found some stuff already that we couldn't talk about yet. Uh, and um, we're gonna bring this out forward in the beginning. But like I says, they vote us out Cone, myself and Brown. These things will never come forward. They will sweep them under the rug again. There's a lot of more stuff that needs to come out, and we will tell it to come out. Uh, Mr. Nassis is a self-made millionaire, very smart, very personal, pleasurable person to get along with. He's pleasant. He brings people together. That's what he's about. Stephen Nassis is a great choice. Uh, I don't think he's going to be there long enough because once this recall goes through, they're going to throw him out. They're going to. Uh, uh, we're going to lose police officers. We're going to lose firefighters. We're going to lose people from DPW. We're going to lose teachers. You won't see administration, people from the administration side lose jobs. You're going to see the workers, the teachers, the DPW, the police, the fire. Like I said, we lost one police chief uh, years ago because the recall destroyed, destroyed people. Why are we doing this? My question is, people at Stoughton, why do these people want the control? I haven't figured that out yet. Well. If you're, if you're not politically, let's say, involved in the town and you're just watching the meetings, you turn on channel 24, you channel, turn on channel 98. They look chaotic. Yes, I agree it, with you. It, and I'm not going to disagree with you. So, so how do you explain that to people? Well, this is why I'm here now. I'm trying to explain. Uh, I've told you the truth of what I'm hearing, and I'm not lying. And I will, as time goes on, I will tell you more. But uh, because of uh, litigation, I cannot tell you. But what I've told you now so far is what I can tell you. Uh, certain selectmen are doing, uh, past selectmen have done this, have done that. Past selectmen chased Mr. Cohn, a 73-year-old man, said he was going to punch him. Then chased, a, uh, it was at uh, Dunkin' Donuts and, the, and put, threatened an 83-year-old man. Yet this person, I walked down, heard the yelling and screaming. I come down the stairs, of course, I'm so light, and everything was shaking. Uh, this person yelled at me, you should be ashamed of yourself. Told me where to go and left the building. <laughs> I just kind of shook my head like, okay, what was that all about? People said I need thick skin. Jeff, I come out of my mother at 200 pounds, like I've said. I wish I could have uh, thin skin. It'd be nice to be skinny. I've never been skinny. I would love to be skinny. I knew it. I'm, I'm not, like I said, these insults don't bother me. I'm giving the people the truth. I'm giving the, the people are starting to realize the town. They're starting to lose. The people want to take their town back. Will you, going forward, because I, I saw some of it Tuesday night as opposed to the previous few meetings, a little bit of a, would, 
calmer sense going forward in, in terms of interacting with people who want to speak during the meetings or, you know, citizens' comments? Yeah, Jeff, and like I says, I was a big promoter of citizens' comments when I ran the first time. I told the previous two chairmen that I'm big on this, and they're like, ah. The pe this is the people's, t it's like I said, the businesses, the employees, and the residents. I want the, I want, I like to see the employees come up publicly and said how they were treated. People were moved, people were transferred. People feared for their job. People feared for their job. People have put stuff on Facebook and taken it down because they said, when he comes back, you're gonna get fired. How do you work in fear? I've had people come up to me, and people have seen this, uh, employees, tell me to stick it where the sun don't shine. And other people heard that, they're like, you're the chairman of the board, and you let these people speak to you like this. No, it's not that they let them speak to me like this. It's their title. That's what I keep telling the people. Mm -hmm. Why, they're mad. I understand why they're mad, but let's try to work this well, out. Can you assure Mr. Hartman's supporters who work at Town Hall that their job wouldn't be in jeopardy for support of him? Yes. I have, they have a lot of great employees, mm -hmm. and these, a lot of people have a lot of talents. They said, speaking of that, and then we're going to have to and go yeah, over we just have about a minute But left. please, yes. let's continue, Jeff, please, because this, <laughs> you talk about that uh, uh, safe. I'll be safe. I have nothing against these people. Do I agree with them? No. And like I said, we can agree or disagree on sport. But how funny is it that, remember the former selectman, who probably sits on this board, in my opinion, there was a secretary prior to the board of selectmen. That this, they didn't like this person. This person was told by the, to the interim town manager, my understanding, like I says, I can't prove it, but to my understanding, and people talk about it, like it says, they, uh, this person was terminated as a, uh, it's like with Secretary Pryor. I don't even know who this person is. I don't even, remember, don't even know the name. But how funny is it that they can, f you fire this one and you fire this one, and everything they do, this is what it comes down to. Whatever they want, no problems. But if we say something and they tell you, like I said, when somebody asks me for something, and not just me, any selectman, uh, we go in, okay, these people put us in office. And they put us in office to get things for them. They feel more comfortable. Instead of they don't know you, they don't come, they're like, hey, come talk with Jeff Pickett. Well, I really don't know Jeff Pickett, you know? And they feel nervous. You remember I came on the show four years ago. I was terrified. I didn't know no clue what was going on. I was terrified. These people are not comfortable. These people who vote us in, they feel comfortable with us. They pick up the phone. They see, in the, you know, what with your wife and your kids. Hey, what's up? I need this, this, this. Let me see what I can do for you. Let me see what, what's going on. See how we can do this. This is what they do. But yet, people get mad because why, is, why do they always call this one man Spanky Susan? Why? because I try to help people. The other ones aren't picking up their phone or something. I've had people say to me, how come this one is not at this event? Why isn't town major at this event? I'm not anybody's babysitter. I took an oath to do what's the best for the town of Stoughton. This is what I did, Jeff. Um, like I said, I didn't think I was gonna become a leader. I personally thought, and I'll tell you straight up, my personal opinion, I knew how some people were being treated. I figured I was gonna come in and be the pain in the neck I was and say, yeah, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong. I figured they were gonna recall me my first year. I really did. Um, then I started seeing how people were getting treated, how certain people were getting treated, how the employees were getting treated, how our residents were getting treated. Um, like I said, the people from the finance committee and town meeting members asked for something, and they said no. And I called the TM and he says, why should I give them? Why should you give them? They pay your salary. They, uh, they pay uh, everything. So this is what I'm saying. These people are evil. So if you recall a Stoughton, I'm telling you right now, believe me, if you don't believe me, in a few years, we'll go into bankruptcy because these people will make well over six figures. They don't care about the blue collar worker, plain and simple. All right, so, so I ask you, vote no for this recall because it's going to destroy this town. All right. Well, uh, David, thank you very much for joining me today. Jeff, thank and you. I know we have a lot more to talk oh, about. Yes. I'm sure we will down the road. But uh, thank you very much to all the um, staff here who help run the show. And uh, I'm Jeffrey Pickett, and you have been watching Stoughton Spotlight. Thank you for tuning in.